Showgirls is a 1995 sexploitation film by Dutch director Paul Verhoeven that stars Elizabeth Berkley, Kyle MacLachlan, and Gina Gershaw. Verhoeven was a really big deal back in the late 80s and 90s, having directed Robocop, Total Recall, Hollow Man, and Basic Instinct. He also directed one of my favorite films of all time, Starship Troopers. Now don't judge me. Showgirls, however, was a box office bomb when it was first released and has a current rating on Rotten Tomatoes of 22%. It ruined the career of Elizabeth Berkley, whose agent dropped her after the release of the film. For this reason, I hadn't seen it until recently, but the film has enjoyed an emergence as a cult classic with people hosting watch parties. There is also a documentary about the making of the film called You Don't Know Me, which was released in 2019. Now, I won't get into what I thought of the film. I'll leave that up to you to decide. But for the sake of this video, I'll only look at the costume design. The costumes are by Emmy Award winning costume designer Ellen Morozhnik. You can see her more recent work on Cinderella and Bridgerton. And you can catch both of them on Amazon Prime and Netflix, respectively. I have a video on the season one costumes of Bridgerton if you want to check that out after this video. I've been on a really big contemporary show watching spree of late. And with that, my appreciation of contemporary costume design, which often doesn't get the same kind of recognition as historical design. I've talked about that before on this channel, but Ellen captures beautifully my thoughts about it when she says, I am a big fan of looking forward to the day in which contemporary film and design is taken seriously, in which it's elevated to an equal playing field. It is a project that has been designed. It is a costume design piece no matter how you go about creating. Now, aside from Showgirls, Morozhnik was a frequent collaborator with Verhoeven, having worked on projects such as Basic Instinct, Starship Troopers, and Hollow Man. Ellen said that it's a luxury to work with the same directors because they speak the same language. Now, before we get any further into this, there might be some spoilers if you haven't seen this 27-year-old movie yet. Also, and this is the first for my channel, there will be some partial nudity. So watch this video before it gets reported to YouTube and taken down. As I mentioned in the intro, I'll keep my thoughts about the movie to myself, but I will let loose on the costumes. So here it is. It's an amazing design. It not only looks gorgeous with the pops of color, pounds of sequins and gemstones, ostrich feathers and pleather, but you can tell that it must have been an enormous undertaking. Not only are there multiple costume changes for the chief protagonist, Nomi, but there is also a shipping container worth of clothes worn by all of the supporting characters, strippers, and showgirls. I also love that unlike the more current slot of movies that use copious amounts of color grading that renders the movies dark, the day scenes and backstage areas are in full color. Nomi, in particular, is always in vivid shades like red, fuchsia, purples, blues, and the like. There's also a definite evolution as she claws her way to the top of the heap, going from the not-quite-Pollyanna-type character to a goddess headliner and diva featured on billboards that line the Vegas Strip. The costumes also feature lots and lots of textures and different fabrications, and the hair and makeup design add to the overall aesthetic, even if at times it's a bit heavy-handed. Well, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Looking at her work with a fresh set of eyes after all of these years, Ellen said in an interview with Dazed, I think that Showgirls, as well as being an incredible piece of filmmaking, is a piece of art with a lot of cultural texture. It really embodies that time and place, and I think it feels authentic and original. Ellen compares the painterly quality of the film to that of American photographer David LaChapelle. When designing Showgirls, the costume designer's research began with a trip to Las Vegas. Ellen said, it wasn't the Las Vegas we know today. It was much seedier and hadn't gone through its resurgence. There was this very thinly veiled underbelly to it, which is really the essence of showgirls. It wasn't this glamorous, perfectly packaged place. It felt gritty and kind of dangerous even. Ellen said that the intention of showgirls was to be over the top and then some. The musical numbers were fabulous to design, and the characters became livelier the sleazier you designed them. 
Most people think showgirls didn't have any costumes, but we had five musical numbers, some burlesque and Versace. Ellen describes her relationship with Verhoeven. She said, I loved working with Paul. It was like working with a mad scientist. He was always there to shock and awe, no matter what we did. I think we worked well together simply because he couldn't shock me. Now, while Ellen never disparages him, Verhoeven must have been a total pill to work with. She said that he would walk into fittings unannounced with the actress undressed. Pretty sure that you wouldn't be able to do that in 2022. In one instance, the director made Ellen cut up a fully embellished costume. She said, I work with these amazing artists in New York on these painted jeweled body stockings at a time when no one was making things like this. They made me these extraordinary garments and I was getting Elizabeth and Gina and the dancers to try them on when Paul walked in. Now, rather than Paul giving Ellen and her team the note to make the corrections, the director got right in there to make the changes himself. Ellen said, he came over and straight away was just like, these are two covered up and started tearing bits off until they were smithereens, which was cool. He's very particular. I think they eventually went from being full body looks to these tiny little panties. That was all that was left. And while it appears that there was some product placement by Versace in the film, in particular the black dress that Nomi sees in a shop window and has to have, according to Ellen, the design house said no when they were asked to borrow that black split medallion dress. So instead, she took some money out of the budget and purchased the dress from a boutique in the Bellagio Hotel and Casino in Vegas. And Nomi's blue two-piece outfit is also from Versace's 1994 ready-to-wear collection. And while I can't get to all of the costumes, I will highlight a few of my personal favorites. Now, aside from Nomi's show costumes, I loved her style. While not speaking specifically about Nomi, Ellen said, The clothes are generated by the character's perspective, the character's understanding their heritage, history, the character's quirks, Everything is about the character that really becomes the clothes. It's their second skin. Whether attempting to hitch a ride or unseat Crystal as the reigning queen of goddess, Nomi uses her body at every opportunity to get what she wants, and she never shies away from color. My favorite costume of hers is this hot pink bra and purple lace crop top paired with some denim short shorts. It's nicely juxtaposed against Molly Abrams' orange top and shorts. And I also like Nomi's short fringe hot pink dress made by her friend and costume designer Molly. My other favorite costume is this resin plate and chain length two-piece set. It kind of reminded me of the drag costumes from the adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, that came out the year before and went on to earn an Oscar in 1994 for Best Costume Design. Ellen said that her favorite costume is the one worn by Crystal as she rises out of the volcano. While it appears that she's nude, I think she's actually wearing a power net body stocking embellished with Swarovski crystals like the one seen here on Elizabeth Berkeley. Ellen said this costume was inspired by Versace's 93 or 94 collection. I actually noticed that a lot of the show costume silhouettes and fabrics appear inspired by Versace. I also love Crystal's white ostrich feather jacket that she adds to her costume during an interview session as Nomi watches in admiration. Actually, I love it all, her hair and her makeup too. Elizabeth Berkeley is seen here wearing it in a publicity photo with Gina Gershon in her purple ostrich feather and chiffon peignoir. And I also dig Nomi's leopard two-piece shit-kicking outfit that she wears in the final act of the movie. With her slick back hair and pale face makeup, it looked like something you might see on Daryl Hannah or Joanna Cassidy in Blade Runner. Some of Nomi's rehearsal costumes, like this crop top and fishnet stockings ensemble, appear to be inspired by Bob Fosse's 1979 semi-autobiographical picture, All That Jazz. Berkeley's fishnet sold at Hake's auction in 2010. While the majority of the costumes appear to have been sold off after the movie was wrapped, there are a few pieces that have popped up in auction. 
Most notably is this costume that Nomi wears at the start of the film as she hitchhikes her way to Vegas to only have her personal belongings stolen by an Elvis lookalike and grifter. Except for Nomi's black leather biker jacket, the entire screen-worn ensemble is there, consisting of a pair of black leather Mia's women's western boots, lacy floral print button-up long sleeve blouse, Levi Strauss button fly women's jeans, and a long braided leather belt with elaborate silver metal buckle by Linnea Pell. It also sold at Hake's auction for a measly $140. But I was happy to see that one of Nomi's goddess costumes ended up in the personal collection of Larry McQueen, costume historian and archivist. In his collection, he holds Nomi's gold lame dress. More recently, Kyle McLaughlin's Zach Carey's costume went up for auction through Profiles in History. The original four-piece ensemble included a Yamamoto brand black velvet jacket with silver pinstripes, a Del Carlo black long-sleeve brand cashmere sweater, and a pair of black John Valdi brand zipper front pants and black suspenders. The auction set the price at $800 to $1,200, much lower than the value of the costume despite its cult status, but it went unsold. That same year, there was a collection of goddess dancer outfits that came up for sale at Julian's auction in 2018. The lot included a lavender eyelash lame waistcoat and a pair of powder blue eyelash lame trousers, a pleather corset with silver tone metal studs and matching pleather chaps, a pair of thigh-high vinyl boots, and a mesh asymmetrical bodysuit and maxi skirt with hologram flex. The lot was accompanied by a Stargate Bellman jacket with gold tassels and a name tag that reads Emmett. And a group of approximately 10 thongs. Yeehaw! You know there's a buyer for everything. Let me know in the comments what you thought about the showgirl costumes. Did you love them? Did you hate them? And if you like this kind of content, consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.